Good afternoon and welcome to Plano West Rotary. I'm Alex Johnson. I am president of the Plano West Rotary Club and I'm very excited to turn it over to our returning Sergeant of Arms, Mr. Mike Walker. Take it away, Mike. Well, thanks, glad to be back. I'm glad, I'm glad to see so many of us made it into 2021. Fred, glad to see you made it. Well, let's start off with our brag bucks and, and probably uh, start with uh, Sarah. Do you have a brag buck you want to share with the, the club? Probably tell her what that means. Oh, I might need a little help. <laughs> yeah, just something you want to brag about. Family work. Oh, uh, my goodness. Um, OK, well, we started back to school for second semester. And all of our schools are open. <laughs> and right. everybody's in class today, either at home or at school. And so we're really. Like to me, that's a brag because we're thankful every day we get kids back in our building. Yeah, that is a good brag. Thank you. Shaheen, do you have a brag for us this morning, this afternoon? A brag? Uh, I think my grandson from Bellingham, Washington is going to join us here in Plano because he will be working on a COVID testing site. And I'm bragging because I've not seen him for the past five years. Oh, so I'm great. so happy that he's going to join us. That's exciting. Thank you. <laughs> Fred, you want to unmute and give us a brag? He, he's muted. You're muted, uh, Fred. Somebody sure can... call me or Fred Thomas, but. Uh, Fred was on because yesterday I had a pleasant surprise at the office. Fred came over and did me visited for a few minutes. But, uh, it was good to see him and uh, looking forward to working with him on Douglas Beach again this year. Thanks, Fred. Dolly, Thomas, you have a brag this morning, this afternoon? I just, I'm just thankful. And that's my brag. I'm just thankful to be here right now. Thank you. Amen to that. Glenn, you have a brag? Yeah. Um, yesterday, we kind of wrapped up Christmas. We saw our daughter who lives in Austin. We met in Waco at the park, and it was really nice weather. Kind of did the hugs and the social distancing hugs and the Christmas exchange outside, but it went really well. So, Thank you. Sounds like a good time. Teresa Williams, do you have a brag? Something you'd like to brag about? <clears throat> So my brag is uh, personal. Our oldest son is engaged, so we will be expanding our family, and I will have a, a daughter-in-law. They have they ha they're going to have a long engagement, so we're looking at October first of twenty twenty-two. So hopefully, um, things will be better in um, across the state and our country, and we can have a nice uh, wedding celebration with like like they're planning and dreaming of. So we're we're pretty excited to to be expanding our family. Yeah, that is exciting. Thanks for sharing. Mr. Mann, do you have a brag? Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, I have a brag. Um, I don't have COVID-19. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife was diagnosed to it. Oh, no. Wow. Uh, last week and... Uh, <laughs> Okay, I, I, I can see you, your lips moving, but I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Anyway, can, uh, glad you're doing well. Best wishes to your wife. Uh, Catherine, do you ever brag? I think I'm the only Catherine in the group here, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's lots of groups where there's like three Catherines, so I have to make sure it's the right one. Um, actually, I do have a, a brag because um, two of our inductees who are, are here today are friends of mine from leadership, uh, Plano class 37, best <laughs> class ever. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kathy. There's Teresa, too. Oh, 21. <laughs> Ike, you have a brag this morning, this afternoon? 
Yes, good morning. Glad to be here. And my brag is always the same as before. I'm running this group. It's good. Um, spread the word and hopefully I'll get Rotary involved in some ways to help them even further. It's in the Jack. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's see. Uh, Mr. Gober, you ever brag? I guess I'm like Mr. Man. I'm just glad I don't have COVID-19 and my family are safe and healthy and, and we're starting to look off well. Amen to that. Thank you. Mr. James Thomas. I guess I do have a brag, and that is my youngest, <coughs> the tall, slender one, who some of you have had the opportunity to meet. Yes. He finally got a job in a foreign country mm -hmm. uh, in Boston, wherever that is. I think that's like a foreign country. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'll be able to kick him out soon, okay? Out of the house. Uh, I <coughs> Uh, that is a good one. Uh, uh, Tahat, do you have a brag? Uh, I'm just happy that my family's healthy. I guess that's a brag, right? Yeah, it, it is. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Carolyn Diaz, do you have a brag? Um, I mean, yeah, same thing. That I'm fine. I'm I'm okay. <laughs> are, are you are you are you zooming us from outer space? Is that where you're at? <laughs> uh, yes, most definitely. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Uh, Brandon Maxey, do you have a brag? Hey, folks. Um, yeah, well, one, uh, I guess today I'm possibly being inducted into Rotary. So uh, very excited to be here and uh, with a great group of folks. I see, you know, like Catherine and, uh, and Teresa and Courtney, some good folks from uh, Leadership Plano on here. So excited to uh, uh, expand that network and uh, very excited. Thank you. Glad to have you. Michelle, do you have a break? Sorry. Um, not, not so much. I guess like everybody else, just glad to be here. Happy New Year. Um, so this is already starting off as better. It feels better at least. So. Thank you. Missy, do you have a, a break? Hey, I'm thrilled to see so many friends on here that I haven't seen in a while. Hey, everybody. And um, those of you who know my daughter, she finished two degrees, two undergraduate degrees at SMU, and she's starting her internship on Thursday. So, yay. Uh, that, that is good news. Thank you. Mr. Frankenfield, do you have a brag? Yes, uh, Happy New Year to everybody, and I'm bragging because today's my 14th day of quarantine after being diagnosed with uh, COVID pneumonia before Christmas, so I've had a quiet, uh, isolated uh, holiday, but things are looking up, but I got to tell you, this thing's for real, and everybody watch themselves, especially if they're out with people. Uh, amen, amen to that. Hope you're glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Uh, some uh, Mr. Mr. Lahani, you have a brag? Yep, I can go. Um, so I set up my New Year's go resolutions a little bit early, uh, just revolving around, you know, eating healthy and uh, setting up reading goals. And I've been pretty much on the mark on that. I think I've been pretty happy about that. Good, good you're on track there. Thank you. Mr. Hall, do you have a brag? Benton? Benton Hall, can you hear me? There we go. Can you hear me now? I can. It's a high tech world, buddy. <laughs> I have Rich, a brag. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday afternoon, uh, number eight at Waters Creek Golf Course. I was 160 yards out and holed out. Oh, wow. Most of the consternation of, of uh, all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats, a big congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. I think we got time maybe for one more. Uh, Miss Miss O'Kane, you want to break? You have a break for us? Yes. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, well, I had the opportunity to travel to Nigeria to see my dad, who I haven't seen for a very long time. So I'm grateful for traveling mercies, and I'm here. Well, well, glad you're here. Thank you. I think we still have time. Miss Hitt, Courtney, you have a break? Yeah, it's already been said. So I'll just go ahead and say it again. I'm just really happy to see so many fellow Leadership Plano 
people in here. So, yay! <laughs> but leadership plan of class thirty-seven is still still the best class. So. <laughs> All right, Mr. President, I, I, my ten minutes is up, and it's back to you. Hey, thank you, thank you, Mike, and thank you, everybody. We actually have a lot of leadership plan of class. Um, yeah. uh, Dolly and I were leadership class twenty-one. I think Lashawn, weren't you leadership class nineteen? Yes, sir. Buzz, you were leadership class what? Eighteen. Eighteen. I think uh, Lawrence was leadership class. I think in recently, so we've probably have at least ten LP people here. I'm the oldest. Shaheen, <laughs> when were you yeah. in it? Leadership class seventeen. Seventeen. So <laughs> awesome! Yay, leadership Plano! Everybody do it. I want to yeah. give one brag. A number of people might have known. My, my take care of my mom, she's in a nursing home and she's got, she's currently being treated for breast cancer for the second time, which is dialysis, heart disease, every, every comorbidity. Well, she got, uh, was diagnosed with cancer about two weeks ago. And I s truly thought she was gonna die before the end of the year, just because, you know, 83 years old and all those issues, but she got through it. She was <clears throat> asymptomatic. They moved her back off the COVID hall, and that was just truly a blessing from the Lord and pure grace. So that, to me, is a lifetime thing. <laughs> I can't even express how big that was because I truly thought I was going to lose my mom. So with that, let's move on. Um, this is an exciting thing, so we gotta, we're going to go ahead and move quickly. And what we want to do is turn it over to... Miss LaShawn Ross, who has her microphone back, and she's going to lead us in prayer. So you can hear me, Alex? Yes. Okay, great. If you all pray with me, please. Lord, we thank you for this gathering, for this opportunity, for all the opportunities that you give us all the time to give back and to be examples of what you would have us to be. Lord, we ask that you would bless this club and those who are joining us today and continue to bless us to be a blessing to others. Bless this meeting and all that's said and done and bless our nation and its leadership. In Jesus name we pray and thank you for all things. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, LaShawn. Now we're gonna turn it over to Taha who's gonna lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and everybody should be able to see us the flag on our screen. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Awesome. Thank you, my friend. For those, we have a number of new people on the call or on the Zoom. What what I get most excited about is the ability of bringing in new people into the world of Rotary. And for those that don't know, Rotary is a global organization of 1.2 million members, every country, basically almost every city in North Texas. We have six Rotary clubs in Plano. Well, we have the honor of inducting three new members today, which is so exciting. And so what I do, because Induction to Rotary is a once in a lifetime Hello? opportunity, but I don't do, I don't do group um, inductions. I induct each individual um, personally. So right now, what I'd like to do, I'm solely talking to Courtney Head. There you are, Courtney. And you have been proposed for membership and the club has elected you. Um, there. <laughs> Actually, I, I got so excited, I screwed up. <laughs> Bear with me, you guys. We haven't no, voted. Not... We haven't voted. No, I... <laughs> so, did you say? I text you. I'm not oh. sure what's going on. Zane, can you mute everybody? <clears throat> so what I have to do is go through. We're going to do a vote. I'm so, I, we haven't done this in a. My bad. What we're going to do is we're going to do a vote on our three members. And then after that, I'm going to induct them. Now, only the members of the club can vote. Um, so what we're, we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Zoom polling feature. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and publish it and everybody go ahead and vote for the members, for the new members.
Go ahead, click your buttons. I think we have one more left and we are good to go. Awesome. And as expected, everybody was voted into the club. <laughs> now I'm gonna move on into the induction. So once again, Courtney, I'm speaking to you again. <clears throat> Let me find your screen. There you are. So Courtney Hitt, you have been proposed for membership and the club has elected you. Therefore, it is my pleasure to induct you into the Rotary Club of Plano West. I understand you are aware of Rotary's requirements and will follow them. You have offered your services to assist your fellow Rotarians in their community and international projects. As you know, Rotary is a service club, each member performing what Rotary terms as service above self. Besides service, you will have the benefit of powerful bonds of friendship with fellow Rotarians locally and worldwide. I especially commend to you, <clears throat> to your attention, the object of Rotary and the four-way test which for, form the criteria for Rotarians in their daily lives. When you travel, you have the special opportunity to attend Rotary meetings and meet Rotarians throughout the world. This is another rewarding benefit of your membership. And now, by the power vested in me as president of the Rotary Club of Plano West, I am virtually pinning on you this pin, this Rotary emblem, and declare you to be an active member of this Rotary Club. Welcome to Rotary. We all look forward to the enrichment of our lives and your own by your association with the world's oldest, largest, and finest service organization, Rotary International. Come on, everybody. Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> Thank you, Courtney, for joining. I know everybody's been contacting over the last few weeks, and you've volunteered with us, and we look forward to volunteering with you more. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Now, Sam Yam, now I'm talking to you. Let me find you on my screen here. Where are you? Because I actually want to look at, there you are. There you are, my friend. Sam Yam Lahani, you have been proposed for membership and the club has elected you. Therefore, it is my pleasure to induct you into the Rotary Club of Plano West. I understand you're aware of Rotary's requirements and will follow them. You have offered your services to assist your fellow Rotarians in their community and international projects. As you know, Rotary is a service club, each member performing what Rotary terms as service above self. Besides service, you will have the benefit of powerful bonds of friendship with fellow Rotarians locally and worldwide. I especially commend to your attention the object of Rotary and the four-way test, which form the criteria for Rotarians in their daily lives. When you travel, you have a special opportunity to attend Rotary meetings and meet Rotarians throughout the world. This is a very rewarding benefit of your membership. And now, by the power vested in me as president of the Rotary Club of Plano West, I pin this Rotary emblem on you virtually and declare you to be an active member of this Rotary Club. Welcome to Rotary. We all look forward to the enrichment of our lives in your own by your association, the world's oldest, largest, and finest service organization, Rotary International. <laughs> Woo! Thank, Thank you, you Sam Yam. I've had the benefit of working with him since, I guess what, your sophomore year in high school, I think, as an interactor. And so it's great now that you have, um, you're in college and you have joined Rotary, which is fantastic. We look forward to volunteering with you some more. Now, last but not least, I am now speaking to Brandon. Brandon Maxey, where are you? There you are, thank you for the wave, trying to scroll through all the screens. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Maxey, you have been proposed for membership and the club has elected you. Therefore, it is my pleasure to induct you into the Rotary Club of Plano West. I understand you're aware of Rotary's requirements and will follow them. You have offered your services to assist your fellow Rotarians in the community and international projects. As you know, Rotary is a service club, each member performing what Rotary terms as service above self. Besides service, you will have the benefit of powerful bonds of friendship with fellow Rotarians locally and worldwide. I especially commend to you your attention, the object of Rotary 
and the four-way tests, which form the criteria for Rotarians in their daily lives. When you travel, you have a special opportunity to attend Rotary meetings and meet Rotarians throughout the world. This is another rewarding benefit of your membership. And now, by the power vested in me as president of Rotary Club of Plano West, I virtually pin on you this Rotary emblem and declare you to be an active member of this Rotary Club. Welcome to Rotary. We all look forward to the enrichment of our lives in your own by your association with the world's oldest, largest, and finest service organization, Rotary International. All right, Brandon. All three of you, you are gonna get delivered this as well as a rotary pin and so on by our membership team. And I believe Catherine is gonna be doing the hand delivering. Is that right, Catherine? Awesome. Our membership chair, Roxana, she did dial in, but I think she's somewhere at a lake house, if I remember right. <laughs> and so Roxana and her team put that all together and we look forward to introducing you, getting you more involved in the club and, and being active in our community, which is what we're gonna be talking about as we move forward. So awesome, I'm so happy to have all three of you. What I wanna do next is, everybody knows I always talk about the Rotary Foundation and we have a lot of new people here. They don't really, the Rotary Foundation is the basis of Rotary. And the Rotary Foundation does uh, projects all over the world. And for our foundation moment today, I just wanna talk about what the foundation does locally. This chart shows um, projects that we did last Rotary year. Worldwide, the Rotary Foundation did $300 million worth of projects. Now, locally, what we call smaller projects, in the North Texas, we did 112,000 um, projects locally. And it's important for people to know that because the Rotary Foundation isn't just globally. That's what people think. We do a lot locally. And so what I did here, I kind of put some highlights of the local um, foundation projects that were done in the Dallas area. We did for COVID, people might remember uh, our district, we did a, a food pantry match and each club donated money to different food pantries and the Rotary Foundation matched it. In our club, we donate North Texas Food Bank. In total, that was $18,000 from the Rotary Foundation, which matched another $18,000 from um, individual clubs. So basically we donated $36,000 to food banks in the Dallas area you know, for COVID. So yay Rotary. Now what I did here in honor of our speakers, I highlighted uh, the education youth related uh, Rotary Foundation projects that Rotary supported locally. And our club, we, we use Rotary Foundation funds for Camp Rila scholarships and graduating senior um, scholarships. Other clubs use it for programs, educating students on financial aid, backpacks, uh, supplies for teachers, students, just a lot of different things. As you can see, $47,000 from the Rotary Foundation was funding educating youth projects, which was 42% of what we did locally using the Rotary Foundation. So once again, my point is the foundation isn't just global. It does a lot local. And these are considered small, small projects from a Rotary Foundation perspective. So as you hear us always talking about the foundation, um, some people know that's going to be my major initiative for the second half of our Rotary year or the beginning of 2021 is Rotary Foundation donations. And so you'll see we're not only global, like in the $300 million, but we also do a lot locally. So that is my Rotary Foundation moment for today. Now, just for a little club business, I have six minutes before we bring in our fantastic speakers today. Um, this is for the club members. Uh, District Roundtable is this Saturday. I need everybody to attend. We are actually the host. So we have a number of club members that put together little videos and we're introducing uh, the first 10 minutes of the um, event of the District Roundtable leaders. So I really would like to get a lot of people from our club to log in. It's via Zoom. You guys got the email. So we look great. We are a phenomenal Rotary Club, and if we show up at District Roundtable, it further points that out. 
Once again, we have pets training in February, sign up, it's $50. Uh, we reimburse. We'd like any, you don't have to be a president elect, do that. Um, you're going to get an email. We're going to be expanding our board. We're going to add four new positions. My desire is to have three of those new positions be newer club members. Our club, we're at 47 members, and I think 58% of those members have been in Rotary um, six months or less. And so it's important that we have that new blood involved in the board. And keep in mind, you don't have to know Rotary to be on the board. This is more governance. We need people that understand organization structure and kind of define where we're going because we need help, especially me and Glenn. Because <laughs> we're, we're, we're the most active ones on the board. So that's that. Um, what's going on. Because we have a lot of new people and we're kicking off the new year, I wanna talk about who we are. We are 47 members. And as you can see, 42% of our club are women. That is awesome. My goal is for us to hit 51% because Rotary wants Rotary clubs to represent their community. Plano is 51% women. So we're still behind. Now we're doing awesome for a Rotary club. I think worldwide Rotary clubs are 27% women but we, we wanna hit 51 or more. Uh, our age, we talked about our age range. Um, we range from 18 to 84 years old. If you look at it, it's, we're, we're pretty well distributed. 32% of our club is 18 to 40, 36 between 41 and 60. That's me, I'm 54. And then we have 32% that's 61 and over. So. We're a really well, good spread out club and we do have our young adult initiative. So we definitely are, are seeking more young adults. For those that don't know, we have seven college students in our club, which is really powerful and we're excited for it. But we also like old people like me too. So, you know, we, we take all. We're very multicultural. We're very proud of our diversity. As you see, we're 4% Hispanic. We're we really want to bring that up. 18% Asian, Middle Eastern, 29% Black, 49% White. That we're still behind Plano's demographics. That's my goal is to represent Plano, but we're getting there. And so one of the things we're really proud of is the fact that our club does a lot of effort to represent the city of Plano. <clears throat> What's really cool is we have six, we have immigrants from six different countries in our club. And so that's just, just powerful to bring in our diversity, different ideas, different passions, and that's what drives Rotary. Now, Rotary, I'm rushing because I got two minutes. Um, Rotary, what we're about is service, and our club leads with service. Uh, Rotary fiscal year starts July 1st. So far this fiscal year, we've done 33 service projects. That's over six months. We've, we've served over 1,100 volunteer hours with 566 community volunteers. And that's important. Our volunteering isn't just our Rotary Club. We only have 47 members. The community partners with us. Everything we do, we partner with the communities, other nonprofit agency, and we have a pretty organized, structured process of working with our volunteers. And <clears throat> with that, we donated $162,900 in goods through partnerships with other agencies. What's important is we didn't write a check for $162,000. We partnered with other organizations and helped them distribute, like food banks. We do a lot with food banks. So we're able to do a lot of good by working with the community and helping those in need. One of the ways we do that is with our sponsored groups. We, we sponsor four separate groups. One, our Rotary Community Corps Plano Douglas community that we've partnered with Douglas Visions Committee, which is a community development corporation that allowed us to do an amazing amount of work in that community and bring other community partners into it. We also sponsor a Plano Community Rotaract Club, which is basically young adults. It goes from 18 and up. Uh, they're a separate club, we sponsor them and they do their thing. And we also have young adults that are members of our club as well. PISD should appreciate, we sponsor two high schools, Plano Senior High School Interact Club and the Clark High School Interact Club. And we are very honored that the president of the Plano Senior High School Interact Club is also the district governor for all 
51 interact clubs in the Dallas area, Julia Lynn, who is an absolute superstar. And so um, we, if you show up at our projects, you'll see a lot of high schoolers there from not only our interact clubs, but the other interact clubs in Plano. Lawrence Mann is on, he's the Rotarian advisor for the, I think like four interact clubs, Jasper, Shepton, Plano West Senior High School and John Paul II Interact Club. So he's the king of Interact there. And so um, we're, really, we're really excited about all the support we get from the youth, from the high school level, college level, and then moving forward. Now to finalize it, I wanna talk about some of our current projects that we have moving forward. Um, we're selling pecans. Those pecans fund our high school scholarships that we give, $2,000 scholarships. Um, if you want to sell, want to buy some pecans, you could click that link. Uh, we have a lot of people in our club that will sell them to you as well. Um, here is a project more people should do. It's cards for nursing homes. We're partnering with the Texas. Well, Carolyn's a project lead. We're 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 partnering with the Texas. What's the name of that organization, Carolyn? Healthcare Association. And all we're doing is you sign up for a nursing home and you send a note, a card, or send art, and we give you all the instructions, you send it to the nursing home because there's a lot of people there that are just lonely or the nursing home um, workers that are just working nonstop. And so this is an easy project. Uh, if you have kids and grandkids, they love to do art. You can stick it in the mail or drop it off there. 100% COVID safe and you can do it from your home. We're gonna be doing that continuously through the year because it's not a holiday thing. People in nursing homes are just lonely all the time. They're in 100% quarantine. My mom has been that. So that's a project we'd like more people to step up on. Um, January 16th, we're going to be cleaning up Avenue K. Glenn Thornton um, leads that project. So sign up and we get it done. And probably, I think if we get 10 people, we knock it out in like probably an hour or so. So um, definitely do that on the 16th. We have our major projects kicking off. Douglas Meal Delivery, which we did for the last six months. We're gonna be delivering meals the first week and the third week of every month. And in Douglas community, it's about 200 homes. We're gonna continue that. We're also adding uh, Barron Neighborhood, Barron Elementary Neighborhood, which has about 750 homes. We're gonna be doing that twice a month as well. That's gonna be a drive-through just because there's so many homes, there's a lot of need. For those that don't know, Barron Elementary from a Title I perspective, 85% of the school qualifies for Title I and that was before COVID. So there's a lot of need in that area and there's a lot of homes and a lot of families that we can reach out to. So those are some of the things we have coming up. Feel free to click our website um, or go bit.ly Plano serves and you can see all of our different projects. So, that's it for club service. So now that which we're all here, we get to hear from Plano ISD. So what I'm gonna do is turn this over to Dolly Thomas and she's gonna introduce our speakers. Okay, uh, can everybody hear me? Because I know sometimes I have problems with my speaker. So it is my honor to um, uh, introduce these three people. Uh, first of all, uh, every day students walk on our campuses to glimpse their future. I'm here to lead them. I led with Teresa's quote because I think that is the example of all the three that we're going to hear from today. Dr. Teresa Williams started her career in education 27 years ago as a teacher. And in June 2018, she became the Chief Operating Officer here at Plano ISD. Dr. Williams earned her Doctorate of Education from Texas A&M University Commerce. Teresa, had, um, Teresa and her husband, Todd, have two grown sons and a future daughter-in-law. Uh, welcome, Teresa. Uh, Ms. Sarah Bonser has been serving as a superintendent of Plano ISD since March 2018. A longtime Plano East resident, Ms. Bonser serves as a teacher, middle school principal, high school principal for PISD. Ms. Bonser serves on the Texas Education Agency's Commissioner's Cabinet and on the Executive Board of the Texas School Coalition. Yay. 
Uh, Dr. Courtney Gober. Dr. Courtney Gober is, and I can't see for my for my my uh, screen here. I should have I should have memorized all of this, but I don't know how to get my pictures off of here. Somebody help me. Dr. Courtney Gober is a 20-year educator who serves as Plano ISD Assistant Superintendent for Assistant Superintendent for Student, Family, and Community Services. While in Plano ISD, Dr. Gober has served as a teacher and or administrator at Williams, Jasper, and Shepton High School. Thank you all for being here and Again, it's my pleasure to introduce those three superstars from PISD. The show is yours, Sarah. Okay, well, I'm gonna kick it off and I, I wanna say thank you all for having us visit your Rotary meeting. Um, it, it's always a lot of fun and especially in these times, um, just to see the faces of friends in the community is a really welcome sight. So thanks for having us. And and uh, Teresa and Courtney and I are happy to talk with you a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different presentation. You know, I know everyone thinks we're probably going to talk about COVID. But when Alex contacted us, he said, we really want to spend time talking about wraparound services and meeting needs of students and families. So. Teresa and I are gonna fly through some slides really fast so that we can get to Courtney because he's like the main course. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, just some real quick things about our district and I'm the clicker, so I'm gonna try to multitask here, but we're led by, a, by an outstanding board of trustees um, who are faithful public servants uh, committed to service in our community uh, to do a job that is unpaid and takes a ton of time and effort in, in supporting the students and families and staff of our school district. So very thankful for our board. And you know, I know Missy's on the call as a former board member. I think I saw Jerry in the room as well as a current board member. So always very thankful for their governance and leadership and support. Um, just to kind of give you, you know, the snapshot of the district. I know most of you know this, but we have 73 schools, about 90 rooftops. Seven, over 7,000 employees, over 50,000 students. And so you can kind of see some of the special um, qu qualities of our learners. 16% are English language learners, 19% gifted and talented, 12% special ed. And right now we're currently one of every three students is economically disadvantaged. And so um, we're working on firming up those numbers. We actually think it might tick up just slightly. Um, and that's up uh, pretty significantly in the last 10 years. So you can kind of see economic disadvantage from 2008 to 2020. Uh, we've grown from 21 to 34% to economically disadvantaged. And I really share that just to, to kind of share the picture of the importance of wraparound services in meeting the needs of students where they are and families where they are so that we give what, we, what they need so that they can maximize their educational opportunities. Um, and then kind of how does that look across the district? And I think this is, if you pay attention to the color of the circle, not the number in the circle, um, you can see that the, the pink circles are those schools that are between 81 and 90% free and reduced lunch. I don't know that everyone knows that in Plano we have campuses in that much economic need. Uh, but the yellow circles, you know, as you start to see that spread across the district, if you look in the middle of the district, um, a lot more schools between 61 and 80% free and reduced lunch. Um, and then the blue circles are actually um, more than 40% uh, economically disadvantaged between 41 and 60. So a lot of uh, economic diversity in our community uh, that, that really uh, impacts how we allocate resources and how we provide services to families. And so I'm going to turn this over now to Teresa Williams and she's going to hit a couple of highlights. And like I said, we're moving fast and we're going to try to leave some time for questions at the end. So if you have COVID related questions, we'll be happy to try to fit those in. It's 
All right, Teresa, you're up. All right, good afternoon. Thanks for having us. It's just been so great, like Sarah said, to see so many friends um, on the screen this afternoon. And so just for the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna zip through some of um, our learning opportunities because I think in order to understand where our needs are, we need to also just have an understanding of context of the things that we're doing well. So we celebrate diversity in Plano ISD and um, currently we have over 100 different languages that are spoken at home and students coming from 127 different countries. One of um, the hallmarks of Plano ISD's excellent education is preparing our students for college, career, and life readiness. And we are so extremely proud of the outcome of our students. We have 120 National Merit semifinalists in 2020. Um, we've had 15 presidential scholar candidates and one presidential scholar semifinalist, and then over 11 or 11 PISD students have been named presidential scholars by the U.S. Department of Education since the program's inception. And, and just to give some context to this, we outperform our neighbors and we're at, and known across not only the state, but the country for the number of students that perform at this high level. And we feel like this is due um, to the learning opportunities that we provide to our students each and every day. So just to highlight some of those learning opportunities in advanced academics, um, we provide several paths for our students to earn college credit while in high school. 47%, so almost half of our senior high students are participating or taking a variety of AP courses. Our dual credit opportunity has grown by 57% in the last five years. And currently where students are taking um, over 3,000 um, dual credit courses through Collin College, which is huge. 32% of our 910 um, students at our high schools are taking AP courses. We had almost 200 middle school students um, take AP Spanish exams. So we have our, our students in middle school that are earning AP college um, credit. And we are just so proud of the success that we've had. Last year, um, 14,421 students or 80% of AP test, take, or test takers earned a qualifying score of a three or higher, which gives them a huge jump start in the, on, on their college path. And then just finally, we believe in college for all. And in order to do that, we have 22 of our secondary campuses um, offer an AVID program, which is a college prep program uh, for students that are um, taking this path or for families that have um, are, are sending their students to college for the first time. It helps them navigate um, and how to prepare for, for life beyond um, high school. Part of our commitment to life readiness, we also have to have a strong CTE program. And currently we have um, 20,000 students that are enrolled in um, a career and technical education course. And uh, last or our last stats, and this is lagging data, but we had over 2,000 students that earned an, in an industry certification. Um, additionally, in partnership with Collin College, um, we've expanded our offerings for juniors and senior students at Collin Technical Campus um, to offer workforce dual credit as well. And so these students would um, have the opportunity to earn dual credit in a CTE field as well as earn an associate's degree. And currently, um, the focus has been on high demand, high wage careers in advanced manufacturing, architecture, and construction and STEM. And with, um, in, uh, with expanding those offerings in the next um, two years as well. So this is a great partnership with Colin. Additionally, all of our high school, all of our secondary high school and, and senior high campuses offer the Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps to complement our life readiness opportun learning opportunities. Um, as well as um, we know that preparing students for college and, college and career readiness, it doesn't start in high school. We, we begin this very early in elementary school and Robotics has been one of those programs that has continued to expand each and every year. And starting with our fourth through eighth grade, we offer first Lego league robotic competition and program. And then from seventh grade to 12th grade, we offer the first tech challenge 
program and then 9 through 12 first robotics and our first robotic competition this um, category of students they have earned several international level awards over the years so we're very proud of of our robotics program and it, again this has been a real popular uh, learning opportunity for our students we know that offering a robot robust music art and athletic programs is essential um, to our district as a major component of offering a well-rounded and excellent education and um, we are getting ready to open our Robbie and Lenore Robinson Fine Arts Center, which we're very proud of, um, as well as offering a full variety of sports, um, fine arts offerings, curricular and non-curricular um, opportunities for our students. And we know that students that participate in any type of extracurricular, um, fine arts, athletics, call, those are those are opportunities to provide them with life skills that will support um, their future readiness and collaboration, communication, leadership, citizenship, responsibility. And so we wanna make sure that we're serving the whole child in, in all areas of interest. And um, finally, our graduation rate, we have, we outperform almost by 10% in the region and certainly five to 7% across the state. So our four year graduation rate, which is in red is almost 96% and 98% and when you look at our five year. And some of you may be wondering why we have five year um, graduation rates. Earlier, we started with that we have students that are, are speaking over hundred languages um, at home and coming from a variety of different countries. So sometimes we have new English learners sort of coming and enrolling for the first time in Plano ISD as, as, a, as an eighth grader, as a ninth grader. And so it may, it may take them five years versus four years. And so um, part of our graduation rate as the state and also on a federal um, accountability side is looking at both five, four and five year graduation rates. All right, so that's a little bit of the highlight of our learning opportunities and some of the successes that we have with our students in Plano ISD. And now I'll turn it over to Dr. Gover. Thank who will um, talk about more of wraparound and our hope serving the whole child. Thank you, Teresa. I'm gonna admit I'm a little stuck. I keep looking at Alex Johnson because he said he was 54. And I, I'm just contemplating, you know, you do. You must be using a lot of cocoa butter because you're looking good for 54. And so now I gotta re-examine my 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 hygiene, I guess, because I I need what you're doing. It's immaturity. I'm just really immature, so it makes me young. I, I might need to practice that then as well. It is good to see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of friends, uh, and and I I'm tempted to do some shout outs, so I'll try to do them real fast. Benton, it's good to see you, buddy. I hope to meet with you and have some coffee real soon. And Missy Bender, longtime uh, supporter of our district and continues to support our district. Good to see her. And Catherine, I see you. You and Dolly, Dolly's one of the first people uh, persons I met here in, in Plano, and so it's good to see all of you. And if I miss somebody, I'm sorry, but I don't have my whole screen on right now. All right, so we have a lot going on, and, and now I think it's more important than ever uh, to talk about, to focus on, and to uh, enhance our services to support uh, our whole, uh, the whole child. Uh, and when we're saying the whole child, we're also talking about that family. And so uh, this year, uh, we've always had, we've always been a strong supporter of social emotional learning, uh, but never has it been more important. And what we're talking about when we say social emotional learning is we're talking about a simple way, I guess you could say it's sort of character education, but, but it's more than that. It's, it's taking care of yourself as a person, taking care of yourself as a part of a whole, whether it's you as part of your family, you as a part of your classroom, you as a part of your school or community. And so we are, uh, we have that throughout our curriculum K through 12, but this year we even uh, expanded it to our after school program called PASAR. And we even included it, and it's a big hit in our employee child care center. So we have uh, babies uh, six weeks old uh, through four years old in our daycare centers. And we're, we're doing a lot with social emotional learning and lessons and activities in those areas as well. Uh, I want to talk a lot about what's going on in terms of our, our services that we've been doing for our families uh, and community. 
uh, our Plano ISD Food and Nutrition Program, we call it FANS. Uh, this year is a unique year because we received some assistance from our government, but we're offering free breakfast and lunch uh, to all of our students, to all 50,000 students here in Plano, uh, free breakfast and free lunch. Uh, I can't tell you, and I, I'm quite doubtful that that, that will last forever, uh, but it is going on this year, so we're very excited about that. For our students who are at-home learners, uh, they can come to this, uh, uh, their home campus uh, on, I think it's Tuesdays, and pick up a, a sack of breakfast and lunch meals for their entire week. And if we have uh, a long weekend, uh, we, we put more food in there for that weekend. So we have, uh, we're taking care of the kids that are with us every day and even the kids that are still at home learners where we have meals for them as well. Very excited about our partnerships that we have uh, with Minnie's Food Pantry and the North Texas Food Bank. Uh, between the two of those organizations, we've been doing food drops. It seems to me like we're doing them almost every week, uh, but we have um, tons of food drops, tons of uh, volunteers and helpers. Many, many are from this Rotary itself. Uh, and so we're taking care of our families and we do the drop off method as well where parents come through the line, pop the trunk of their uh, car, and we, we fill it up with some food. And so we're very proud of that partnership. Also exciting to, to look at a couple of programs we have that are very unique. One's called Brighter Bites. Right now we only have it at Meadows, but we're getting ready to expand it to Memorial Elementary Schools. Uh, Brighter Bites is, uh, it provides <clears throat> um, food for fresh fruit and vegetables to kids. Um, every week. The difference with this program is that it also provides it to every teacher in that building. So not only do the students get fresh produce, but the teachers do as well. And then some of you might remember uh, Travis Frederick, uh, former Dallas Cowboy. I think he was our center, great center, great guy. Uh, he set up a food pantry at Huffman Elementary School. It's a beautiful thing to see. It's stocked full of food and the kids and community around the Huffman area are uh, benefiting greatly from that. Other things we have going on, uh, and this again has come up a lot more in the last year than ever before, uh, families, students, uh, parents that need help uh, with, with a variety of things, just simple basic life needs, uh, whether they're you know, transitioning between homes, uh, homeless, can't pay their utility bills, can't get around because of lack of transportation. Uh, we've been partnering with a lot of community agencies to help these families uh, and, and, and proud to have our Education Foundation and uh, our own school board president, Tammy Richards, uh, who made a, a, a great con contribution that we can help families make those bills, uh, pay their rent, uh, get transportation, whether it's bus passes or DART passes or um, some Uber rides or whatever we can do. And then part of your Rotary is our good friend, uh, James Thomas, and he devotes his, his whole time to taking care of our homeless uh, students and their families. Uh, other needs that have come up this year that we're working to, to make sure we're meeting those needs is, is health and medical and dental and vision and all that. We have lots of partnerships uh, from Children's uh, Medical uh, Center to uh, uh, the Lions Club for Vision uh, and some dental mobile lab that we have. Uh, so when the families are having some medical or, or health needs, we partner with our community agencies to make sure that those needs are met. And we also look at our employees. So if our employees uh, are having some kind of financial burden or struggle, we've had uh, for quite some time our employee assistance program uh, where we work uh, to make sure their needs are met. And as always, and we want to really expand this service and that's immunizations, uh, helping families get those immunizations for themselves or their children. This year, uh, and Rotary again was a big part of this as well, helping with school supplies and various donations. We have our core store that's run by the Education Foundation that primarily helps our teachers with school supplies and classroom uh, supplies uh, for them. But we've also had uh, supply drives and, and, and uh, school supply pickups 
We gave out over 1,500 backpacks uh, full of school supplies this summer. Uh, we even took care of our school at home kids by uh, delivering to their door. Uh, 950 deliveries were made and we made sure that they had the necessary art supplies uh, so that they could take those art classes. All together uh, from school supplies, PPE, um, various donations, we received about a quarter million dollars in donations. Uh, so we're very proud of that. We have, um, so let's go back to social emotional learning. We, we have online lessons and activities uh, for not only students to do online, but teachers to work with their classrooms and even parents to work with the little ones at home that may not even be school aged. Uh, we have tons of resources for social emotional learning activities and lessons available online. We're making sure our counselors are staying in touch with all kids, both in person and remote. Uh, their uh, goal, uh, we said, I think it was the end of September that they had to have contact with every single student in our district. And they met that goal. And so we made sure that we, we talked to, checked in on every single student in our district and our counselors across our district did that. And I'm very proud of them and, and the effort that it took to make that happen. Uh, some of our campuses are piloting some telehealth and telebehavior services. Uh, we have some partnerships with um, various agencies that uh, work with our school nurses uh, and, and school counselors and social workers to make sure that uh, families or children that need health services uh, or therapy type services uh, that we get that with our partnerships through them. One of our newer partnerships uh, is with SMU and, and through SMU, we provide family therapy. I believe right now we have over 30, maybe even close to 50 families uh, utilizing family therapy, which includes children's play therapy uh, with our partnership with SMU. One of the biggest things uh, that happened due to COVID was it forced Plano and many, or I, was, I almost wanna say all school districts across the land to really close that digital divide. And so uh, we have distributed over 48,000 Chromebooks to date, and we have enough inventory to provide any kid in our district a Chromebook if they did not get one and need one. Uh, similarly, we have uh, distributed over 1,000 uh, hotspots, if you will, or internet uh, connectivity devices to families that have requested it. Uh, let me give you some fun facts here. This, this is interesting. Since the first day of school, we have counted more than 5.5 million logins into our web desk. Web desk is our single sign on uh, feature that once a student signs into web desk, they have access to all the resources available for learning. Uh, that number represents 20, a 20% 20 increase over the same time period of last year. From within that portal, we have launched teaching and learning applications almost 22 million times this school year. Students and staff have combined to open Google Classroom, which is our most used digital resource, 8.5 million times since August 12th, and have collectively invested more than 125,000 hours navigating that platform alone. This last little fun fact, I think is just uh, indicative of what Teresa was talking about in terms of our diversity, and that's in four months, uh, we've launched uh, Zoom 160,000 times and logged 12,000 time hours of Zoom, uh, but we have allowed students, even if they're not physically here in our district or city, to attend school via Zoom, and we have connected with students from 65 different countries this school year. So thank you guys for that time and I'll pass it back over to Sarah. So I'm gonna wrap up really quickly. Um, there's always a call to action and, and our call to action would be if you have a desire to, to contribute to the school district or get more involved um, either through our education foundation or join the PTA. I mean, Barron is a perfect example of a PTA that is really struggling for membership. And you do not have to have a child in school there to be an active PTA supporter and member. So if you go to the PIC PTA website and, and you, can, you can look at our PTAs and you can join one, you can join 10, you can join 
73. Uh, and so, um, you know, I just hope you'll think of ways to, to get involved and, and stay involved. And I know from the beginning that you all are very dedicated to education. If you are interested in volunteering, it's a little weird this year, uh, but you know, we have virtual career days. Things are happening virtually where volunteers are still engaging. And so Volley is our new um, way to to get in the system and see what volunteers are needed in the school district. And you go in and create a volunteer account and then you can see all the opportunities to, to be involved in the school district and what the schools are needing. And so you can kind of match uh, volunteering to service needs. And then finally, um, what you'll see coming soon on our district webpage is a community engagement hub. Uh, it's not up yet, but it's in the works. And so uh, it'll be a one-stop shop for looking at how to, um, how to engage and, and interact with the school district and, in a more maybe user-friendly way. So we're excited about that. So I'm gonna stop talking now and thank you for your time. I know we're one o'clock, uh, but I wanna make sure I'm gonna stop share so I, now I can see you again. Um, but if there's any questions that you want to ask Teresa or Courtney or I, we're happy to stay on the line as long as you have time and answer any questions that you have. We have time for just one question and Catherine Goodwin requested that. So Sarah, I, I actually, I'm going to answer your call. Rotary is going to answer your call and specifically um, in, in the area of meals delivery. We are excited about our new project at Barron, and, and thank you for that plug for PTA because I am the um, VP fundraiser PTA uh, at Barron Elementary, and, and you're right, our, our, our PTA could use all the help it could get, and, and, and actually that's what spurred this project um, to deliver meals out of a concern for what was going to happen over winter break for those, for those children. Um, and additionally, we have another project that we would like to help out as well, where we understand that, that your, your fans employees are on Tuesdays, I believe, um, after school, um, also putting meals in the back of trunks for families in need. We very much want to go forward with these opportunities. We have hit a little snag that we need your help with. And that is we are an amazing um, volunteer generator. I will tell you that for the event we were going to have on the 19th. And unfortunately, we had to cancel because of a, of a food issue. But we had 120 volunteers ready to go on that Saturday. And I'll tell you that 120 volunteers, we got them in like about a week after putting up up the uh, the request for volunteers. So we're very excited. We very, very much want to provide that. Um, we are going to need lots of volunteers for our Barron project, Barron community project, that we're going to communicate to, I believe, Menden Paul and James helped me in another school as well. Uh, and we want to help those employees. You know, I, I hear that your uh, um, teachers and fans folks are having to work overtime or on their own time to, to put that food in trunks after school. Um, we have a security concern where there's some issue because we're on campus that all of our volunteers will have to go through, you know, the security process that that we're all familiar with. I am very much with PTA because I know how that works to be on campus. However, we're asking you if you could intercede for us because we will be on campus in the in the case of the bear and meal delivery, it'll be a Saturday. There won't be anybody there, you know, school's not in session. Um, and in the case of the fans delivery of food, um, it's after school. And what we're really trying to do is save you know your 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 PISD folks because they work so hard already during the day. It's hard for them to also you know be working late after to just to get that food in those trunks after as well, trying to do a good job. So that's what we really need help from. Otherwise, we won't be able to do the things that we really want to do for those kids. So we'll we'll work with Courtney and Joe Parks, our safety and security specialist, and and uh, Mr. Thomas. And we'll see what we can work out. Um, you know, if, I will say this, you know, when, when there's any opportunity for someone to be allowed on campus where students are around, we cannot circumvent the security processes because we cannot expose kids to people who have not been screened as volunteers at our schools. So the interaction around students does make a difference. And, and so I, you know, I don't want to over promise and under deliver 
but I, I want to be honest about safety and security at the same time as saying we'll do everything we can to make it possible for you to support the school district in your efforts to help feed and, and address food insecurity. Um, and certainly the Saturday piece works great. Uh, and if it's during the school day or when there's still kids around, uh, it, it just is a little bit different and we'll, we'll see what we can do to, to problem solve around that with you. Okay, that would, that, would be, that would be awesome. You know, we are moving forward. I'm on, on the committee for the Baron one, of course. Okay. Uh, we're scheduled for the 23rd. So if you could let us know, so we, you know, we don't wanna let the neighborhood know and get volunteers out there if we have to cancel it, cause it's gonna get, it, it would even be really hard to get, I know, you know, say 40 volunteers through that process. Okay, Courtney, Courtney, do you have something to chime in on that one? Yeah, Catherine, proceed with the, the 23rd and, and uh, James and or I will get in touch with you. I, I just think we can create just a memorandum of understanding and, and just proceed with like that. Let's, let's try for your Saturday uh, uh, service, we can keep that real easy. So proceed with your January 23rd event. Perfect. And then as Catherine also mentioned, uh, the curbside meals, Tuesday, you know, it's at the five high school starts at 445, which is after school. We'd love to help out the fan group with that. And that's probably going to, I mean, James and I were running through some numbers. It could be it was 20, 30 volunteers every, every week. And if they got to go through that volley process, which is a two week interval, we're not going to be able to get the volunteers. And because it's after school, we're hoping that, you know, they're, they can look at it. But with that, these are discussions we're gonna to continue to have. Everybody knows I am the most anal person on ending on time, but you guys are so important. And so we, we wanted to cover it. So I feel sorry for everybody because we're going over, we never go over. So you okay. guys are super special. But what I wanna do though, is what we do for all of our guest speakers, we make a donation in your name. And so in, for Sarah, Teresa and Courtney, in appreciation for your time and program, Plano West Rotary will donate $10 in each of your names to the Rotary Polio Plus Fund, together with the two to one matching funds from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that $10 turns into $30 and it'll provide polio vaccine for about 50 people. And we thank you for speaking to us today and we thank you for giving us the opportunity of supporting the families of Plano, that's what we do. And a, a lot of PISD fans are on this call because they value what you do and they wanna help the families and the students. So thank you for your time. Um, before we end, we still have a couple, one, a couple other things to do before everybody hops off. Um, we do next, next meeting, uh, we have the Rotary Youth Exchange, which supports high school students being a, giving them the ability of traveling internationally through Rotary. Michael Pugh will be speaking. One of our college student members, Zane Carlson, will be running that meeting because I have a business engagement. So we will have um, one of our young adult members running a Rotary meeting next week. And so with that, to close out the meeting, I wanna turn it over to the infamous, the amazing, the one of the kind, James Thomas, who's gonna lead us in the four-way test. Thank you, Alex. I thought you were about to say Benton Hall. <laughs> Sir Benton Hall. Sir Benton Hall. The four-way test of things we think, say, or do. First. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Rotary. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a fantastic week. Bye. Bye, guys.